and welcome to the latest Scots Way Hey podcast. In this podcast, I talk to Kevin Brown. Kevin is the producer and driving force behind Songs for Scotland 2, which is perhaps unsurprisingly the follow up to Songs for Scotland, which was a musical project and collaboration which occurred just before the independence referendum back in 2014. Doesn't that seem like a long time ago? In a minute, um, you'll hear Kevin talk about Songs for Scotland 2, as well as the Alistair Gray Scholarship Trust, and the the two are are closely linked. Um, But before we hear him, I should say that we recorded this interview via Skype um, because Kevin uh, is in Canada at the moment. So I hope that the sound quality isn't impeded in any way and doesn't affect your enjoyment. And I will see you um, after this. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another Scots Way podcast. And today we're going to be talking to Kevin Brown about the Songs for Scotland 2 project. Hello Kevin. I'm very well. I should say that this is a a kind of international um, conversation because Kevin is in Canada at the moment. Is that right? That is correct. I'm in Vancouver seeing my family. And, um, well, I don't know. I only know the little bit that you've told me about the Songs for Scotland 2 project. So why don't you kind of fill us in on that? Well, okay. Uh, Songs for Scotland is... um something that we did in 2014 for the independence referendum. Uh, and I think that the, uh, that was an amazing time. You know, that was a time of a real flowering of Scottish culture and everybody was out doing everything they could uh, to win the vote. So the question was sort of being posed in uh, Scottish musical circles. What is there for us? How can we make our voices heard? Um, I had been reading some fairly theoretical things uh, and also following the debate very closely. I'm kind of a politics junkie. Okay. And what I was seeing uh, was that the forces arrayed against independence were dunning everyone to death with this dispiriting corporate media narrative, which pretended to be of the reasoning mind, you know? What they said, in effect, is you're all going to freeze in the dark. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. you're not going to have BBC, and you're going to have borders up, uh, you know, on the Tweed, and so on and so on. And people were kind of buying it. So, in a similar right. manner to the recent referendum in Europe, I think the same kind of tactics have been used there. That's correct. Uh, so, how do you sidestep that, and how do you apply? How do you give musicians a voice uh, that can play an effective role? Well, to me, because I love music and design and art, and I think music in particular, uh, it was fairly obvious that you basically put out an independence message using Scottish music uh, and using Scottish culture to remind electors, first of all, that they are Scottish, for heaven's sake, not just economic units. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> right? Uh, and especially because, uh, you know, I'm deeply in love with Scottish music. It's beautiful. It's world beauty. Yeah. Robert Burns, for heaven's sake. You know, Hamish Henderson. Uh, so, I, in 2014, I pulled together sponsorship from Bella Caledonia. They were our sort of media voice. Sure. And uh, I love Scotland. So, I mean, it's like a big bustling village. Very quickly, I met uh, key players in the music industry. Uh, Douglas Eady, I'm writing him a letter right now. He produced Transatlantic Sessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, he proved to be really key because he was able to connect me with um, the top, top echelons of Scottish music. Right, so uh, people like Karen Matheson and Kathleen McGuinness in the folk trad area, Emily Smith and Ewan McLennan, his address book was open to me, and they all just leapt in. So the particular vehicles we used back in 2014 is first we created a downloadable album of songs, um, and 
And secondly, we had a big event just before the vote at the Oren Moor, mm -hmm. which we recorded on film. You can look that up on YouTube. So I loved the process. I was, of course, disappointed with the result. I think what we did was really very effective. It's impossible to quantify that. How do you quantify anything in these terms? But, you know, when Cameron allowed the vote, uh, he thought it was it was 30% for yes. Somehow, we got it to 45%. Yeah. So, I think it is, um, it's a good thing to do. Okay, fast forward. It's now 2016. Uh, we've had the Brexit vote. Um, you know, another independence referendum is being mooted. Mm -hmm. These are very muddy political waters. Of course. And I feel sorry for Nicola having to handle all of this, you know, the when to, when to have the referendum. So, again, Songs for Scotland is a, just a great way to remind people to take them out of the border, the border posts on the Tweed, the hard border, you're going to freeze in the dark, all of the things you can read in the Daily Mail and in the Telegraph each and every day, and to put them in mind of the fact that we are uh, a distinct nation and help to convey, help them to imagine that we can become a small Scandinavian, Scandinavia-esque, Mm -hmm. you know, equitable, social, democratic, incredibly prosperous country. I find Scots to be, it's really quite funny because when I first moved to Scotland, I heard about this idea of the, cr the cringe. The cultural you know, cringe, yes. Cultural cringe, you know. To me, you know, I'm an historian, by the way. I mean, that's my training. You know, Scotland is the place that invented the modern world. Mm -hmm. And uh, to this day, I find that Scottish people are incredibly well-educated and, and cultured and aware. You know, where does this come from? So snap out of it. You know. Do you think the cultural cringe, um, as was, do you think that is plays a factor? I mean, I have my own theories about why, you know, it's even mentioned. Do you think that does play a factor, a kind of self-image or a kind of idea of self-worth? Uh does it play a role? I I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I just find it to be inscrutable. I find it to be amazing that, given uh, the culture that Scotland has, I mean, the sort of world-beating role, even even as the people, you know, Scots did a reverse takeover of the British Empire mm -hmm. and ran it, you know. Uh, Scotland is such an over a nation of overachievers, and you have image problems. Mm. Um, in any event, uh, we can all of these things disappear when I'm listening to some of this marvelous music. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I th personally, I think that this idea of self-image and perhaps feeling that cringe actually came from a generation or two, or maybe even three, of education that was. No, it didn't include a Scottish, a strong Scottish aspect. So the music that you talk of, I didn't discover Hamish Henderson till I was long out of school. I did most study of Burns and again at university, not at school. Um, right. You know, great writers, great poets, history. You know, basic Scottish history as I now know it. I didn't get at that young age, and therefore, if you don't then you kind of lose a sense of identity and you perhaps do lose a sense of self-worth. That There's arguments that that is now changing, but what I think you know, you're kind of referring to, I think that's where it comes from. And I do think when people discover um, the, the music um, and, and the culture that perhaps had been denied them, then you, know, you can almost see people's chests swelling and becoming more proud of that heritage. Yes, uh, that is sort of what we set out to do uh, in 2014, and that's what we're going to do again. Right. So in terms of, you asked me actually about Songs for Scotland 2, and I answered extensively about Songs for Scotland 1. This time around, um, okay, we kind of entered the fray again. We, don't, we can't predict exactly when and where. We know 
the question will be put to the test again. This we know. Uh, and so we're doing another downloadable album of songs. The first one was interesting in that I am not out of the music industry. I come out of the film industry, film and television industry. Mm-hmm. So I met Douglas Eady, you know, mm-hmm. uh, who produced Transatlantic Sessions. So the first album, which has been rather successful, it's a niche product, all music products are, was designed, uh, I mean, it opened with the Proclaimers cap in hand. Mm-hmm. Even the Proclaimers were anxious, were, were anxious to help. You know, it included two proclaimer tracks, but it ran a bit like it's a bit like constructing an opera okay. using using existing songs. So that's what we set out to do. Um, it was a pretty damn good effort. And uh, two years later, uh, Bella Caledonia Songs for Scotland, the album, is holding up quite well on Amazon. So uh, I've done I've, all, all the licenses are in. The sound files are arriving. Uh, the second album will have 20 tracks. Um, it will be another, it will tell a story. It will have a narrative to it, okay. just like the last one did. And while I liked the first one, I'm head over ears in love with this one. It was <laughs> so incredibly good. So uh, we're doing that. Uh, that's being distributed as a perk to get it out there, then it's going to go up on Amazon again. And because it is, I believe, uh, amazing, it will it will do good service. We've had a couple of letters back from people who were involved with, who went to the event, the Songs for Scotland event in 2014, yeah. to say when they think about that event, they still get emotional and to say that they love the album, they still play it on their car all the time. Okay, so we're doing an album. Uh, There is also an Alistair Gray connection. Yes. In 2014, I met Alistair. Of course, you know, I'm I'm from out with Scotland. I I don't speak correctly all of these things. (laughs) Uh, But I was a man on a mission, and I had something I needed to get done, and I needed to get a later generation copy of Bella Caledonia for our artwork and I chased Alistair down we hit it off you know yeah we hit it off really rather well uh I think in that that first period I was just in awe of the man because he's an unparalleled genius um and we had lunches together and got together and I paid him visits and so on uh since then of course uh he's suffered a terrible accident Mm -hmm. that's fairly well known. He's 81 years old. Uh, And I got together with him and said, you know, I'm thinking of doing another Songs for Scotland. Right after the Brexit vote, I'd like to do another album. And I don't know, projects, if they're going to succeed, take on sort of an organic life as this one has done. And now uh, it has become, we are creating an album of pro-independent songs with an operatic narrative to it no, right. uh, that is in Alistair Gray's honor. And uh, many of the songs de- are based on this idea, hmm, work as if you live in the early days of a better nation. Sure. So we're doing, we're fundraising this as we did the last one um, on Indiegogo. It's yeah. crowdfunded. And if we can raise the entire budget, we're going to be um, uh, at the Orinmore on, it looks like it's going to be late November. We'd like to bring Alistair out for that, uh, if you know he's up for it. Yeah, sure. We put the question. So he's aware of this. He knows what we're doing. Alistair is an extremely self-effacing man. He is, yeah. Uh, and, but nevertheless, I think it entertains him. <laughs> to be to be this animateur, you know, at this age, uh, and to have the Scotland's music industry out celebrating his achievements. I th- so, yeah, I think uh, 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 Alistair, um, the idea of a collective, he, he enjoys that. He enjoys the idea of um, you know working with other people, and even 
supporting uh, uh, other artists, you know, above himself. I think there's very few things that give him more pleasure, and I can imagine um, uh, his delight in being involved in such a, a project. Um, now, it's linked, to, as far as I know, to something called the Alistair Gray Scholarship Trust. Could you say a bit on that? Yeah, well, uh, putting this together, uh, we decided, you know, talking to Alistair, interestingly, I mean, he's, I, I hate to say this is almost a laissez majeste, but, you know, he's an artist. Mm -hmm. he's, a write, he's a writer of renown. Um, his musical... I think it amuses him uh, to be helping to raise funds uh, to support a next generation. Yeah. So this is just in the discussion. Alistair, we're going to do this. We're going to try to raise a significant, significant chunk of money. We're going to put together a pro-independence album of songs. And I was dealing at the time with uh, Simon Tumir of Hands Up for Trad. Mm -hmm. It's an umbrella uh, organization. And I mentioned it to him, and he said, we'd be happy to administer such a trust. So it was kind of back and forth between Simon and Alistair. Alistair said, we'd be, I'd be happy to help you with that, be happy to contribute some, some prints, which are actually going like hotcakes. I'm sure, show. yeah. <laughs> They're going very quickly off the site. So um, that's the way we've structured it. Our objectives are threefold in terms of Indiegogo. Uh, first of all, we're creating the album of songs. That's the paramount thing. That's the first objective. The second objective is to create, uh, hmm, how do you put this? A vehicle. Mm -hmm. I'd like to put 2,000 pounds in it. And if we make our goal, we'll be able to do that. How far does 2,000 pounds go? Not very far. But it will be administered by Hands Up for Trad. It will be an Alistair Gray uh, Musical Scholarship Trust. And I have already been in touch with a number of granting agencies who, if we create it, have said, please apply to us in the future and we'll top it up. Right, fabulous. That works quite well. Definitely. So, um, I think in a way, when you... What is Alistair? Somebody said to me that Alistair in Scotland is a secular saint. <laughs> I thought that was well said. Yes. For the for the educated classes, you know, he's a man who has a great accomplishment, who has always stood by his principles. Um, and therefore, when you create such a vehicle named for him, uh, then you can create something that will stand going forward. So one is album, two is scholarship trust. Alistair has explicitly said, yes, you can use my name. Mm-hmm. And thirdly, we'd like to do, and you get this first, Alistair, I've altered the date. We want to do the event uh, around St. Andrew's Day, right. about no November the 29th. I've called uh, the Oranmore just this morning, and they'll be getting back to me with the date around St. Andrew's Day. Um, and what is that event? I'm not sure. We're going to, we've got a really talented group of people. It'll be a musical event. Uh, and it'll be amazing. Can you say a little bit more then about, uh, is it the same musicians who are involved in Songs for Scotland 1 who are involved in Songs for Scotland 2, is there, or is there some changes there? There are definitely crossovers. About half of the musicians on the album are the same, uh, just different songs, uh, I guess I'll... And the other half are new. And what is Songs for Scotland? So I was tasked in 2014 with creating sort of a, I, I think of it as a flagship um, musical pro-independence initiative. Um, and where it sort of, we, we all stumbled forward in the same general direction, myself and Mike Small at Bella Caledonia. And we came up with people's music and a mashup. So it is a uh, cross genre. The first and the second album included hip hop. Mm -hmm. Artists like Loki and Stanley Odd, both of them uh, have contributed tracks to this album. Fantastic. Um, Kathleen McInnes has one of the most beautiful voices in the world ever. She's a fabulous singer, absolutely. And uh, she is going to be 
uh, we're going to be using Oran Achoish, sorry, my Gaelic is awful, which is a song about the liberation of the Stone of Schoon. That mm-hmm. is beautiful, right? Uh, then there are some artists. So these are fairly prominent artists, sure. right? Yep. Uh, I've arranged to also get a track uh, from Jim Reed, right? Quite well known, quite well known folk trap singer. Yep. Um, and we've got singers who are almost completely unknown, but who who produce something somewhere along the line, or maybe several things that are absolutely superb. Often in the context of the twenty four referendum, right. because it was a, an incredible period of creativity around that. Um, so there you are. It's a mashup. It's cross genre. It is structured to tell a story with a happy ending, I might add. Um, well, but let's hope so. Let's hope so. Um, yeah. On you, the, the website I was looking at, there was also mention of the Bruce 700. Yes. Could you say something um, about that? Do you know what? I'm going to do you even better. I have been chasing Alan and Grigor. Grigor is... Uh, you know, who again is this sort of unparalleled voice. And just this morning, uh, they sent me the lyrics to part of this, which will appear on the album. It's called Brosna Shad, which means uh, incitement, incitement to battle. And Grigor sings it. Today I have the lyrics. Would you like me to read them? Oh, yeah, yes, please. So this will actually come on the album. I was so excited by this. I think this music is really extraordinary, and I think it is a work of unparalleled genius. And I think that you should talk to to Alan about it at some point. Here we go. Brosna Shad, incitement to battle. Shoulder to shoulder in the battle of heroes with the rightful king we would stand. Extirpate the serpents from us like Patrick from the bushes. That comes slippery, malicious, venomous, worm-like from the lairs. The disillusioned children of the gals of Scotland come with me now to victory or death. Lift the beautiful, resplendent banner, fine warriors, about the day the bards will sing, reflecting with fluency those present and those to come. The disillusioned children of the gales of Scotland come with me now to victory or death. Where in the battlefield of this world can be seen such hardy youths? Ah, their gathering is beautiful and noble to me. The yew tree which over the ages has grown. The disillusioned children of the gales of Scotland come with me now to victory or death. Um, of course, I don't listen to Grigor with his amazing voice. That will appear on the album. So, I flatter myself that this album will We've broken all the rules and created something quite amazing because it ranges from uh, well-known to unknown, uh, from classical to hip-hop. It's all over the map. And by God, I think it works. So and, and what drew you to these projects in the first place? I mean, what was it that you said, yeah, this is something I, I need to get involved in? Well, initially, again, it was, uh, it was a political workshop. I mean, the referendum was an amazing period. Yeah. Uh, it was a time when we could, we could reinvent the world. We could design a new country from the ground up. Exciting, right? Yeah. And uh, I've always been a bit of an entrepreneur. I'm a producer. I'm always ready to jump in and say, how about this? Let's mm-hmm. do this. And somebody said, go ahead. And so I said, okay, I will. Um, I mean, that was astounding. And the event um, was people, someone told me, referred to it as the victory party we never had. Mm. You know, we yeah. were ahead in the polls. On that particular day, the SI was at 52%, and the atmosphere was electric, and people were walking on air. So anyway, the whole thing was really quite a high point in my life. I guess I've set out to replicate it, but as with all projects, sometimes you feel, you know, it could have been a little better here, a little better there. So I've been working like an idiot day in and day out for months. You can't imagine, you know, you're dealing with uh, 18 people and getting licenses and sound files and permissions and copyrights. It's quite an endless process. Yeah. Uh, what do I get out of it? A feeling that I have contributed.
contributed. I've done something of importance. Uh, and a beautiful something beautiful that I guess has my name on it, although it doesn't. Yeah, you sure. Know, you, don't, you don't see my name anywhere, but I know I did it. Yeah. And uh, I guess finally, again, organically, this project has changed and grown and gone in this direction and that. Um, the idea that we could have an event for Alistair Gray at the Oren Moore underneath his Sistine Chapel for the working class. Yeah. And light those murals for him again in his honor when he's 81 years old. And that's amazing. That would be a beautiful thing to do. So I'm really motivated to, to do it. Well, I can think of no better reason to do it either, I have to say. Um, I think that's the perfect place to leave it. So, Kevin, thank you very much for talking to us. And um, we will be back with you very soon with someone um, completely different. Well, we hope Kevin has whet your appetite for Songs of Scotland too. In a minute, we have something of an exclusive. Um, you're going to hear a song which is uh, on the album. And the song is Theme for the Early Days of a Better Nation, which is a composition by... Matt Seattle and David Finney, and which is sung by uh, Jackie McGuckian, um, with Robert McFall um, and his band um, providing the music. Um, but before we hear that, uh, Kevin gave a lot of information out on websites and when the Orin Moor date is. And in case you missed any of those, um, links to um, everything and um, probably some more will be on the post uh, which accompanies uh, this podcast. In the meantime, I just want to say thank you very much for listening, as always, and we'll be back very soon with someone completely different, but hopefully just as interesting. Cheers. <laughs> Oh